big sector. Many is, is five years is a long time for. I think December of 2009 been the last game here at Anfield in the Champions League. So as you can imagine, we we deserve the the right to be in it. You know, the last couple of years we've been working very hard, and in particular last season we had a great season. which earned us the right to be in it. So as you can imagine, we're we're really looking forward to it. I think success is about qualifying for the group. We'll take one game at a time, and and obviously we're at home in our first game and. And we aim to, to perform well and, and get three points. But uh, I think our overriding objective initially is to, to come out of the group and qualify. What then have you been able to work out about the about Luda Goretz and the, the kind of task or the test, I should say, that you face in your first Champions League game? Well, like all games at this level, it'll be a tough game for us. They're, they're obviously the, the top team in, in Bulgaria. We've obviously had them watched and done a lot of research and analysis into them once we. We knew that they were in our group. They they play an open attacking style of football. You know, it's the team the four two three one and the two fullbacks look to get forward. You know, and do control on players in midfield. You know, number ten that moves well and, and wingers that are probably more stretched than than what you would see the, the wingers nowadays. So a team that want to to attack and want to work well. So. Uh, I think they're fourth in their league at the moment, seven games unbeaten. So, so they'll come here with confidence, and they'll obviously look to perform how they how they've been performing back in, in Bulgaria. So, so for us, we need to be concentrated. But it's very much for us at Anfield. It's very much about our, ourselves, really. We need to to start now being really aggressive with our press and then, and then a bit more tempo to our, our passing, and obviously uh, that will ignite the crowd here, which. Will, which have been brilliant for us in my time here. So, um, but but we know it'll be a tough opponent. Defensively, Brendan, the two clean sheets in the last 13 Premier League games. What do you put that down to? To the team. I think we need to. Um, we obviously need to be better in in those areas. Um, of course, we were disappointed at the weekend. Um, I think it's a, a game where when you dominate with the ball but don't score then you at least want to get a point from the game so we're disappointed with the with the, cor- uh, with the corner and how we can see it um, but I think it's continual work we've brought in players that understand the way we work but it's still going to take that little bit of time you know we had five players making their Anfield debut at the weekend and, and obviously that cohesion um, as I said does take that little bit of time obviously at Tottenham we mostly the players that have been working with us for a little while in terms of the base of our team so um, but as I said our, our emphasis will always be positive um, but for sure we, we need to tighten up in some areas Brun, will you expect more protection from Mario Balotelli both in the Champions League and the Premier League given some of the treatment that he was dished out uh, on, on Saturday as well well listen, we expect <coughs> of course the, the referee to protect all our players is not Mario Balotelli but um, listen it's a, it's a man's game it's a competitive game obviously if it oversteps the mark when uh, when he's not uh, involved in, in any of the build up of the game then of course it, it's something we'd want the referees and officials to look at but I think it's one that there's no complaints from me as I said it's football's for men it's competitive it's, it's strong and, and We'd ask the players to, to be that in our team, but but to be fair and how they want. Brendan, we saw Martin Skirtle back in training this morning. What update have you got for him, and are there any other injury concerns for you? Well, Martin has uh, worked very hard. He, as you say, he joined the group yesterday. Um, so he is he's working well. He's probably too early for, for this game, but certainly after a good week's training, should be available for, for the West Ham game next weekend. So... Um, Apart from that, but we're pretty much the same in, in terms of the injuries. Brendan, obviously we've talked about Liverpool being back in the Champions League and what it means to you and, and so on, but in terms of the feeling that you get from the fans, the excitement around the club, can you can you sum up what it means to everyone to be back in this competition? Yeah, I think it's, it's only one of the, the last couple of days when you know, actually the game becomes close and the Champions League footballs come out again on the training field and... Um, I think it really brings home probably how long the club has been away and and, and probably been too long. So uh, 
but, but certainly our, that has been our objective really over the course of certainly well, when I came in that was my main priority to get the club back to this level because this is a club that as I said really needs to be at this level uh, both for itself and for football in general I think it's as one of the football and greats uh, around the world and, and this is the elite competition of club football so uh, so it feels brilliant to be back and of course coming off the back of a defeat it's even more important for us because it's a game that can't come quick enough for us last season we'd had it with a week uh, I think the supporters are going to really enjoy it I've had a few of them in my office uh, in the last week or so talking about uh, the group games and everything here and uh, what they're looking forward to so uh, so for them I know first hand that they're absolutely yeah, really looking forward to be back travelling throughout Europe again and and as I said, that's where we do it. We do it for the supporters. Uh, Brendan, you said five years has been a long time, so presumably one of the big aims is to make sure Liverpool don't stay out of the Champions League for a long period again. Yeah, uh, the, the key for us is to make and then build towards making us a sustainable club, you know, at, at the very least a, a top four club. So, um, and this is where we want to work, I think, as, as managers and coaches and players. You want to be at the elite level and, and the Champions League is that. There's no doubt there's a really talented squad and the likes of Stephen or even Dejan have got good experience, but is it a learning curve for the, the majority of, of your group? Yeah, absolutely. And, but it's one that, that excites us as well. I think, as you say, Stephen has you know, got a, a great record in this competition. You know, he's the, the highest goal scorer in the club's history with 28 goals in, in the competition. So um, he's played many times in it. And, and as you say, we've got other players that have got experience, and we've got a good mixture because for the young players, they're going to gain experience. Young players like Raheem at 19, and, and as I said, we, we've got a very young squad. So, uh, so for us, it's it's about embracing it. There's certainly no fear of the competition. It's one where we want to go and really, you know, impose our style and, and our our way of working and playing. I think we've we've done that over the last 18 months. And it's something we have to continue to do. With, uh, with Daniel out injured, Mario Balotelli assumes the responsibility of being your, your senior striker. How well do you think he, he handles that responsibility? I think time will tell. I think the you know the boy's only in the door. Um, he's working very hard on the training field. He was unfortunate that he he was ill last week, and. Um, and it was really only the day of the game that he uh, he was declared himself fit to play, which shows that he really wanted to get out and, and play here at Anfield. So, um, but listen, he's also experienced as well. You know, I think he's he's arguably one of the most experienced players that we have in terms of this level of competition, in terms of international caliber and and a club level. So, um, so I think for him, I think. And, and the best players, they enjoy that responsibility. So so I think it's one that I'm sure he's relishing. And, uh, but on the training field, he's going to work hard to, uh, to accept that responsibility and know that he, he's been brought in here to do a job, which is to create goals and score goals and work hard. You said the rest of a team that like to attack. Do you, do you really expect them to come here and, and try and do that, or do you expect the likes of them and, and, and Basel to, to come and, and stifle you in the, in the way that Villa did so successfully? How do you cope with that? Well, one, uh, I think in, in terms of it's how they play, the you know their normal game um, in Bulgaria. I think the club is its emphasis and philosophy is to play. You know, they want to play attacking football. Um, they may want to come here and, and sit back, of course, and and that's fine if that's the tactic. But I think the emphasis on the team is to to play. Basel, obviously. You know, maybe slightly different. Um, how they would set up might be a little bit more uh, in a block and a bit more defensive. So, but certainly the, as I said, the, our opponents tomorrow night, their idea is to to play attacking football. But uh, but I only really worry about ourselves. I think for us, we need to improve on that aspect. You know, I think that we're used to starting the games very very quickly uh, here at Anfield. Uh, but it's also important if we don't get the goals in those early moments that we don't concede. Because I think the game from Saturday, we uh, it was it was doubly difficult for us because we we didn't get a goal in that early period, and then we conceded. And, and Aston Villa defended well, 
um, we didn't have as much penetration. We didn't have, have you know have enough invention in that final third as what we would have liked. Um, but that's something that we we need to improve on. And I know this group of players that it's something that, that they're very conscientious to improve and be better. So um, so as I said, that it's something that we'll learn from, and and hopefully when that challenge, which it will come again, teams will come now to uh, to Anfield and, and don't want to open the game up so much and maybe wait for a set piece or for the counter attack. We have to be able to cope with that, and that's something that we'll work on the training field. Uh, the question is about the game uh, with Goretz and Stiawa. Uh, probably it, it has been a part of, uh, uh, of your research and, and analysis of the Bulgarian team. And the question uh, is uh, basically uh, regarding the match. Uh, how did you see it as a football fan? Because it was quite an entertaining match. For the goal, obviously, the guy scored because um, they obviously were losing 1 0 and right into extra time, and obviously. They got the goal with a great volley. Um, and obviously the central defender goes into goal for the penalties and becomes a hero. And, um, but as I said, for for our opponents, it was, I'm sure it was great for them to qualify. You know, they've worked very hard um, to get through the competition and obviously to arrive into the group stages. So, uh, so we know they'll be excited about the, the game, you know, coming to here and coming to Anfield which is one of the most iconic football stadiums in the world, uh, will make it a great game. So uh, um, we will respect respect them like we would if we were playing Real Madrid. Uh, he's asking about uh, a goalkeeper tomorrow because uh, um, there will be some changes. So whether you, you're aware of these changes? Yes, you signed a goalkeeper last night, I believe. So we have our guys in the analysis department working and and seeing where um, uh, or who maybe could be in goal. So we understand the, the first choice isn't available or, or the second choice and, and the third choice is the young keeper. So, and I think, as I said, I believe that there was a, a goalkeeper signed late last night. So uh, so we will be prepared and, and do our research on whoever is in goal. Brendan, you talked about the club, the fans, how excited they are about it, but you personally, how are you feeling facing uh, or coming, leading your team for the first time in the Champions League and you personally facing the best managers around the world in the competition? Well, of course, I'm very, I'm more privileged to, to be in it for the, for the supporters, to be honest. I think it's, it's part of my journey as a, a coach, of course. It's, it's this level that every manager and coach wants to work at. But to be able to lead such a special club, uh, and return back into the Champions League again. Uh, I'm just very privileged to be able to do that. It's not about myself or anything to do with with, with me. This is really about the supporters and, and the players. You know, it's we, we, as I said earlier, we have earned the right to be here. We've worked very hard in the last couple of years uh, since we've come in, and and now we have to. We have to keep improving. We have to keep sustaining our performance level and improving our performance level. So, uh, so as I said, it will be special. I remember my first game here at, uh, as I said, as the manager of the club, was uh, probably one of the only games I've kept the shirt from, which was the first game in the qualifying rounds of the Europa League. Uh, and that was a very special moment because it was my first competitive game. And, of course, Tomorrow night will be extremely special. One because it's in the Champions League, and two because it's here at Anfield. So, uh, but every day is is a huge privilege for me to manage at Liverpool, and and tomorrow night will be exactly that.